Los Angeles Rams fall to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, 16 to 13. Tom Brady finally gets the monkey off his back in Tampa by defeating the Rams here. Uh, he becomes the first player in NFL history to throw for 100K passing yards, including postseason. It's including postseason. So don't, don't get on me. Um, Brady leads this team on a game winning drive late in the game, uh, wins it 16 13. He does what Brady does. Uh, he was able to find, find the way to win. And Earlier on in the show, I talked about that these two teams being the biggest losers because it just wasn't that great of a game. There was a lot of sloppiness from, from both sides of the ball, lots of drops, lots of miscues, um, Cooper Cup being the only guy for the Rams. But you said some of the kind of stuff with me that I wanted to take into this chat, and it was the fact that the Bucks won this game. And although it may not have looked pretty, they were able to win. And uh, you said you don't know if the Bucks are a winner uh, or a loser in this situation. Can you uh, Can you touch on that? Yeah, I think there's there's something to be said when you're playing as poorly as the Bucks have been playing over the past month or so, um, and able to just get off the, like just just find a way. And I think it was all evident in the way Tom Brady approached his press conference. I don't know if you saw it, but he comes in, he was like, "Wow, that was fun." He was like, "Man, that was fucking fun." Like he like he was just he's like or said he's fucking awesome or something. Like he felt I saw a sense of relief on his face. Um, and again. You know, we don't talk about personal stuff in here, but I think it was a lot of personal. I think it was a lot of professional, just relief of, man, I needed this win. Like we had, I, I, in my in my my own mind, my own space, I needed to win this football game. And I saw that from Tom Brady. And I'm not saying that's going to spark him to go on a run. And But there were some vintage Tom Brady moments in that game, um, late especially. And like you said, there was a lot of drop passes, especially on the Buck side, that they might have been able to score sooner. Um, but I, I, the defense is still really good, uh, despite losing guys like Shaq Barrett and, and, and some other guys, I think that defense is still really good. First of all, shout out to Devin white and, um, and Levante David, because Devin white was called out and Devin white showed up and he played really well uh, as a Levante David. And I thought, I thought that there should have been more positives than negatives coming from that game, um, for Tampa Bay. I get it. They didn't score a lot. Their offense didn't play well all game. They put up 10 points in the fourth quarter and found a way to win. The running game is still a big issue in that interior offensive line play, but I don't think that's getting fixed anytime soon. So you just have to live with it and you just you have to find, find a way around it. Yep. You got to find ways to win. That was awesome. <laughs> that was fucking awesome. I got you. That's it. I got you, fam. Like you, you could see how much when he walked in on his face, the, Everything that had built up to that moment with the Giselle stuff and the divorce and then not winning, like he's a very competitive person and failure. He's not, he's not for failure. And so I just saw a sense of relief from him and that's just a regular season football game. So uh, I think that that was, that was big, a big mental hurdle for him to get over uh, to just feel what it's like to win again. And, and hopefully that can spark Tampa going forward and they can get, you know, some things going offensively, but they got to find a way to get that running game going because both of these teams just cannot run the football. They just can't. Yeah. Just not, when when, when the, the Rams got to stop the Bucks, it was so funny. The Rams stopped the Bucks. I go, oh, Tom Brady will get another shot. There was never a doubt in my mind that the Rams were not going to be able to run three times and get a first down. Like, they didn't get a yard. Like, I knew. I was like, oh, if the Bucks have three timeouts or two timeouts or whatever it was, I was like, they'll get it back because the Rams are not going to be able to run the ball. And they didn't, they didn't, they absolutely could not run the football when they needed to the most uh, 24 carries for 68 yards, 2.8 yards per carry. I'm sorry. That's that's and not better on Tampa side, 20 carries yeah. for 51 yards, 2.6 yards a carry. These are yeah. the two worst rush offenses I've ever seen in football ever. And I'm not, that's not a euphemism. That's not joking. These are the two worst rush offenses I've ever seen from a production. I, I, I talk, I, I, one of my biggest winners this, this in week nine was Joe Mixon. I talked about the offensive line and like him overcoming that bad offensive line. Sometimes you just can't overcome the bad offensive line. Even if you have talent, we've seen Leonard Fournette be good. We've seen Cam Akers be good. We've seen Daryl Henderson be good, but we're not, we're not seeing it because they're not playing well and the offensive line's not playing well. That may be the key to unlocking uh, the, both these offenses, but now, the Bucks do win this one, 16-13. Tom Brady uh, now leads the NFL uh, all time in game-winning drives. Yesterday, surpassing Peyton Manning with 55 game-winning drives as the Bucks defeat the Rams, 16 to 13.